upload it time to time. In case of any other query, you can write it on the chat box and I'll get back to you. And I also welcome um, Mrs. Abina Banu, who will be taking your session. Thank you so much. Ma'am, you may please take over. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Yes. So today concept, uh, today the quant topic we are going to deal with is regarding the normal distribution and probability. Box plots. Uh, actually, box plots was a topic related to the yesterday's concept, which was missing uh, in yesterday's class that we are going to continue today. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. I hope my voice and screen both of you. Right. Now, starting with the normal distribution. So let's uh, see some basic stuff regarding this normal distribution, and then we will proceed with the question part and all. OK? Right. So to know this normal distribution clearly, let us consider a simple graph, a histogram. So let us say we have a data set. A data set contains some data, like uh, let us say that is 2, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, uh, 5, 6 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 here. OK, and then 7, 7, 7, uh, wait a minute. Seven for one time. Eight, six, six, and six. Let us consider uh, this as an example first. So this this is a data set given. Let us say there is a set which contains this uh, data. So if I want to plot this data in, on the graph, histograph. Let me uh, plot the graph first. So let us say uh, that is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. OK. Now, as of now, anybody can tell me what will be the mean of the data given, median, and mode. So in yesterday's class, we have discussed regarding mean, median, and mode, right? So mean is nothing but whatever the data is given, the sum of the observations divided by number of the observations. That a simple average we are going to do for the mean. And median and mode. So first of all, uh, let me draw a graph for you. So first, uh, by seeing these values, how to uh, draw the bar graph, histogram. So first thing here, uh, how many uh, twos are there? So we will see that, how many twos are there? And we will represent that. There are There is only one two, right? So two is repeating one time. So we just make a box here. And three is repeating for one time. OK, another box here. Next, four. Four is repeating three times, right? So four is repeating three times, then it will be something here. Next, five. If we see five, it is repeating six times. So uh, our graph will move to this part here. So five is repeating six times. and six is repeating three times. So six is repeating three times. OK, so something here. Yes. And then seven, seven, if you see in the data, it's repeating for only one time. So if you see eight is also repeating for only one time. So directly, whenever this type of graph is given and you are supposed to find out the mean, median, and mode, uh, then how to do that? So first of all, uh, mean of the data. So mean mean of the data, whenever the box plot is given, we have to multiply the terms which are on the opposite axis. So uh, it is like we have to multiply and sum up, right? So it will be like 2 into 1. We are just product. We are just uh, producting this 2 into 1, 3 into 2, 4 into 3 uh, in this way. So 2 is repeating for one time. So 2 into 1 plus 3 is repeating one time. So again, 4, 4 is repeating three times. So in this way, if you uh, calculate the values, finally, uh, the value 
the, the values here in the on the denominator will be something i'll just uh, make a space here and i'll write here so it will be 2 plus 3 plus 12 so 5 5 is repeating 6 times so 30 again 7 uh, 7 6 is repeating 3 times uh, 6 is repeating 3 times so 18 7 is repeating one time so 7 plus 8 divided by total so total there are how many numbers if we count it is 16 numbers. okay right so by doing this we will find out the mean here the mean of the data will be 5 after calculator by seeing the data uh, if we want to find out the median so median is nothing but the middle most term so median also 5 and mode is nothing but the most repeating value in the data so as of here, the most repeating value is 5. So most repeating value is 5. So mode will be 5. So if I want these values to be represented on the normal distribution curve. So how the normal distribution curve will be? Let me explain that first. So first thing, the normal distribution curve will be your bell curve shape. It will be in the shape of bell curve. So here, mean will be equals to median, and this will be equals to mode. Okay. Now, uh, let me draw the bell curve. So this is how the normal distribution curve look like, which is in our next slide. Okay. So always this data, the data here on the both the sides will be symmetric. The data will be symmetric data. Okay. So whenever we have mean here. The data will be always symmetric, I told you. So if we move to one part from here to here, that will be a mean plus one standard deviation. So this value, we call it as a standard deviation from mean to one value. So if we move a little more, that will be mean plus two standard deviation. If we go to the left side, if we move to the left side, it will be mean minus stand, one standard deviation. And here uh, it will be mean minus two standard deviations. So this we call it as uh, uh, mean, which is uh, exactly on the center. So in normal distribution, we know that mean will be equals to median and mode, right? So here mean, median, and mode gives you the data of 50%. As I told you, the data will be symmetric on both the sides. So this will be 50%. Uh, so the, va the, the value here, that will be 34%, 14%, and 2%. In the same way, if I move to the left-hand side, it will be 34, 14, and 2% again. Okay. So for example, let us say uh, mean is given as 163, and one standard deviation is given as 163. Uh, one standard deviation is 3. Then what will be the next value here on the graph? Standard deviation is 3. Then the mean, whatever the mean here, we will represent it as 163 here. And uh, if I add it 163 plus 3, 166 will be my standard deviation above the mean. If I go towards below the mean, I have to deduct the 3 value here. It will be 160. It will be uh, 157. So if I move on here, it will be 169. In this way, we have to represent uh, an idea about this normal distribution curve and uh, the standard deviation in normal distribution and the percentage calculations, right? And above the mean, below the mean concept. Now, one important thing here, the range of this standard distribution, if I talk, uh, normal distribution, I'm sorry, the range of this normal distribution, if I talk about, so range is nothing but the maximum value minus minimum value. That's highest value minus lowest value, right? So yesterday we have discussed, yesterday's class. So in, in this normal distribution curve, if I want to find out the range, so range will be always mean minus uh, maximum value, I mean, um, Minimum value, we need to find out. If I want to find out the minimum value, it will be mean minus two standard deviations. Maximum value will be mean plus two standard deviations. I hope you understood. So this is the mean. Maximum value, two standard deviations, we have to sum up to the mean. And minimum value, we have to deduct two standard deviations for the minimum value. Let's see the figure, which is in your next slide, regarding this normal distribution. Right. So this is what uh, we have gone through in the previous slide, right? So this is the figure which what we look what it looks like. Now let's try to solve the questions on this. Our first slide, first question. So please go through the question once and let me know the answer. 
So if our set of data has mean of 4.2 and standard deviation of 7.1, what is the range of values that lie within two standard deviations of the mean? Some options are given for you. Uh, let me know which one is best. We need to know the range here. Okay. Take some time. Once you finish, please put your answer in the chat. Now we have to find out the range of the uh, standard distribution uh, actually. So uh, the set of data has been mean of 4.2 and standard deviation is given as 7.1. And what is the range of the values lie within two standard deviations of the mean? Right. So range is nothing but the maximum minus minimum value. So we know the maximum value. Uh, we need to find out if you need to find out the maximum value. What will be the maximum value? First of all, is given mean is given 4.2 plus one standard deviation is 7.1. So according to the uh, concept here, we need to find out the maximum value that will be mean plus two standard deviations. If one standard deviation is 7.1, then obviously the two standard deviations will be 14.2. So this is 18.4. Next, minimum value. What will be the minimum value here? So to find out the minimum value, we have to subtract the mean from the uh, standard deviation, two standard deviations. So uh, if I take point two, okay, this will be the minimum value. So value this will be minus ten. Okay, so range range will be always there is uh, there are options here given so we need to see which option is correct actually uh, uh, decimal value is missing here in option d it is 18.4 not 184 18.4 please check it okay so let me see how many of you have given the answer for this yeah you need me to explain Just explain the answer See, uh, one standard deviation, one standard, I told you, right? Uh, wait, let me show you the figure. Yeah. One standard deviation in the sense. Wait, wait. Let me make a space out of this. So let us say this is a bell curve. This is a but the difference between the mean and another value here right so this is known as one standard deviation so uh, if one standard deviation is given as 7.1 standard deviation is given as 7.1 we know that the value of the range will be always maximum minus minimum and i told you what is maximum and what is minimum here in this slide so maximum value for this standard uh, normal distribution uh, um, curve or normal distribution concept if you talk about then maximum value will be mean plus two standard right in the sense the last end if you see this so this is our zero uh, percentage if i talk about uh, the percentages on this uh, bell curve right? yeah, if i talk about the percentages on this bell curve starting with a two percent here and it will be hundred percent here so maximum value will be this value right Minimum value will be this value. So maximum minus minimum value in the sense how many standard deviations we are moving, how many values we are moving, that is that actually seeing here, right? So two standard deviations. Actually, one more thing uh, to make you clear. Uh, in this, uh, exactly to the 0%, it starts from 2%. It will not attach to the axis, OK? Right. I hope I answered your question. Moving to our next slide here. So maximum value is 
mean plus two standard deviations. So that is the rule actually. So maximum value is mean plus two standard deviations, 14 point. And minimum value, uh, minimum value here will be, uh, we have to just take the different answer part will be B, D will be our answer. Yes, there is another question on the screen. You can just go through that. Yes. Still any doubts, you can always put the uh, query in the chat box. If you didn't understand the previous question, I'm here to explain it once again. No worries. Still doubt, then you can. If not, uh, just go through the second one and let me do that. Once you're done. Yeah. Hardly two minutes will be given for you to solve a question. So try to uh, maintain the timings here as it's very important. Okay. The length of certain population of earthworms are normally distributed with a mean length of 30 centimeters and standard deviation of 3 centimeters. One of the worm is picked at randomly. So this is a concept of probability. So let me give a small basic stuff regarding the probability. So if I talk about the probability, so probability is P of E, happening an event. So it's nothing but probability of happening any event will be, we can uh, simply take it as required by total. So whatever the values we require and what, what is the total actually given with that, we can find out the probability of any event. Or if I talk about uh, symbolically, then we can take it as N of E by N of S. So ha not happening an event. So this is a formula for probability of happening an event. The probability of not happening an event will be 1 minus P of E. So always uh, we have to remember the probability will be in the range of 0 to 1 will not go beyond one so always the probability whatever the answer you'll be getting that will be always in the range of zero and one okay so uh, the event which is certain to occur if i talk about the event which is uh, 100 percent certain assurance to be occurred is the probability for that will be one and the event which is not occurred which is there is no chance of occurring an event the probability for that will be always zero Okay, and one more thing, uh, the probability of, uh, the sum of the probability of possible outcomes, sum of probability of all possible outcomes will be always one. Okay, for example, uh, let us see an example. Actually, this uh, concept is not really uh, related to the question here. All this concepts, whatever I am explaining here, that is a little basic stuff I am giving before going into the concept in depth. Okay. Right. Uh, so some of uh, probability of possibility of happening an event is one I told you, right? So if let us say there is an experiment happened uh, where the three possible outcomes are like P, P by 2 and P by 4, what is the value of P if, if this is the question? So uh, we know that the, prob uh, the there is one property in the probability that the sum of possible outcomes will be 1, then P plus P by 2 plus P by 4 will be always 1. So by solving this, we can do that. The P value will be somewhere around uh, 4 by 7. Okay? Right. And one important thing here in the probability, whenever it is end, we will use the uh, concept of multiplication or we will use the concept of addition. At least means minimum to maximum values. At most means maximum to minimum values. So this is a little basic stuff regarding the probabilities. Now, you just go through the question. The question is the combination of probability and normal distribution. I'm expecting the answer from you guys. Once you are done, please reply in chat box.
yes maximum is 36 is that was that for the previous one or this one okay see this is also the same thing whatever the question belongs to the normal distribution you just put it on the uh, figure so normal distribution draw a bell curve so it will be easy to uh, analyze the points put all the points on the graph and uh, you can go through that so i as i told you the normal distribution curve will be a bell curve a 50 percent of data will be our mean so this will be the 50 percent of data always okay now let us uh, go through the question so length of certain uh, population of earthworm are normally distribution with a mean of 30 centimeters so mean is 30 and standard deviation is 3 if mean is 30 what will be one standard deviation here 30 uh, standard deviation is 3 the next value here it will be 33 above the mean so again if i go through the uh, next value here it will be 36 right so here uh, if it is below the mean so below the mean it will be 27 and here it will be if i if i minus 3 from this it will be 24 above the mean adding uh, 3 to 30 and below the mean taking the difference of 3 from 30 i mean subtracting 3 from 30 okay so uh, quantity a says the probability that the worm is between uh, 24 and 30 so i have given you the percentages so 50 percent data is always symmetrically spread here so uh, if it is symmetrically done towards the both the sides the data will be 34 percent 14 percent and 2 percent here and 34 14 and 2 percent on this uh, left side okay uh, so it's always good to see the uh, percentages here so if uh, the probability that the worm is between 24 and 30 so 24 and 30 how much percent what is the percentage here uh, in between 24 and 30 if i see the percentage so uh, it is 34 plus 14 so 34 percent and 14 percent so this is 24 actually okay so this is 27 if you draw it neatly you can understand so it will be 34 uh, percent and 14 percent the, the data spread here is around um, 48 percent of data okay uh, this is the value for quantity a and uh, if we go through quantity b it is 27 and 33 centimeters there is 27 so 27 is here and 33 is here how much percentage it's occupying it's like um, uh, 34 plus 34 you can see this 27 here 34 and 34 so 27 and 33 lies in between these values here uh, so it will be 34 plus 34 the value of this will be 68 percent so probability right uh, so uh, here for the uh, in these two quantities quantity a and quantity b it's 48 for quantity a and 68 for quantity so always quantity b greater if you have any doubts or any question to be repeated, you can always put a message in the chat box. I'll repeat the question once again. Okay? Right. I hope you understood this normal distribution concept. So normal distribution, uh, I repeat once again. So normal distribution is a bell curve. So here always in the center, mean, median, and mode will be equal. So the data spread will be uh, like uh, symmetrically spread data. So it is like 34%, 14%, and 2% on the right side, and 34, 14, and 2% on the left side, the data is spread. And exactly on the center, it will be 50%. We all know that. That is our median and mean and mode. All, this, all the values are same here in this uh, normal distribution. Okay. So if I want the values above the mean, so above the mean, like for example, this is mean above the mean in the sense uh, this one is mean so uh, mean plus one standard deviation mean plus two standard deviations in this way we will move uh, for the points over there above the mean and if i'm talking about below the mean we have to deduct the points deduct the standard deviation from the mean and we have to put the values okay as of now i have uh, done this question for you okay so there are some more uh, type of questions in this once the class is done, you can go through that and practice. So next concept is box plot. 
I hope normal distribution concept is clear for everybody. How did we get 48%? Oh, see, this is our slide. Let me draw the figure perfectly. So this is the thing. Just a minute. Yeah. Okay. See, according to the rules, I'm just drawing a bell curve. And with this, the 50% of data and uh, some values are defined here like 34%, 14%, and 2%. So this is 34 again, this is 14 again, and this is 2%. So all the values on the right side are above the mean, all the values on the left side are below the mean. Okay, so this is our normal distribution bell curve as of now. 50% of the data is nothing but the mean, right? So mean in the question is given as 30. So mean is 30. What is one standard deviation? One standard deviation in the sense this value. Okay, this value we call it as one standard deviation from here to here. That is our one standard deviation from here to here, two standard deviations above the mean. From here to here, one standard deviation below the mean. And again, from here to here, two standard deviations below the mean. Now, if I want uh, uh my value here what will be the value i need to add mean and standard deviation so standard deviation is already given in the question that is three centimeters so adding three to 30 it will be 33 one standard deviation is 33 what will be the next again 33 plus 3 we need to add it so it will be 33 plus 3 is 36 two standard deviations above the mean now moving towards the left side below the mean it is so here the value will be something uh, 30, uh, 27. Okay, we can take it as 27. And here it will be something uh, 27 minus 3, 24. Now see the question. So uh, quantity A is 24 and 20, uh, 24 and 30. How much percentage of uh, the graph is occupying 24 and 30? That is the thing we have to see. How much percentage the graph is occupying? 14% and 34%. So that is that is how we got 48% here. In the same way, uh, moving to the second uh, quantity here, quantity B. The quantity B says how much, uh, the what will be the probability here? And we have to check for uh, the data which is occupying 27 and 33. How much percentage it is occupying 27 and 33? So red line, you can see this, 27 and 33. 27 and 33 is this box, right? So this box that is 68. I hope I answered. And uh, if there is still any anything that you are unable to understand, you can just clear. Yeah, that is the same thing for all the problems, OK? Whatever the structure I have shown here for this normal distribution, uh, 34, 14, 2 towards the left si right side and towards the left side. That is the same for each and every normal distribution question. So uh, when sometimes to uh, question will be like uh, to for the students, confusing and trap questions also will be given. The word normal distribution will not be specified in the question. So one thing normal distribution given in the question, then only go through the concept of bell curve. If not, there may be any other procedure to do that. Don't go for it. Uh, don't go for bell curve if normal distribution word is not given in the question. OK, then that, that is the thing you have to, uh, small, small things we have to understand and analyze. So it's not a tough, uh, tougher one. It's very easy if you understand the basics. OK, it's look complicated if you listen to the class for the first time. Once you do as many questions as uh, uh, a practice work, it's good and good enough. Right, box plot. So before uh, going in depth in the box plot, I would like to give you some box plot. Yes. <clears throat> what is box plot? Box plot is also called as whisker plot. 
okay box plot is also called as whisker plot and uh, this thing we will use in the quartile deviation concept so let me uh, tell you what is the quartile deviation first and then i'll explain the box, box plot concept. so quartile deviation our next concept so what does it mean by quartile deviation let us say there are some numbers which are uh, like i'm just taking a simple example i'm just taking numbers from one six seven eight nine ten and eleven so these are the numbers if i talk about the percentages of this number so this will be our starting minimum value right so this will be the minimum value and this will be the maximum value always minimum value gives you the zero percent minimum value always zero percent and maximum value always hundred uh, percent what will be the median here what is the median? So median is nothing but the center middle most term. If you just cancel that, that will be the median, right? Uh, so that will be, uh, uh, wait a minute. So for your understanding, once again, I'll repeat the concept. So this is how we will do it. A simple way, right? We can say median is six here. So that is the concept of median back here we are dealing with the quartiles it's not median actually it's a quartile quartile is nothing but quarter okay quarter uh, thing here quarter in the sense 25 percent of the data okay now i'll just yes what will be the 25 percent of this data so how many quartiles we can divide this part that is a concept here so minimum and maximum we know that minimum value will be the starting one and maximum value will be the end one so what will be the quartile quarter uh, things so uh, we know that this is our median so what will be the 25 percent of this value so 25 percent of the complete data so which lies here uh, to the left side of the median 25 percent that will be three so this will be our So second quartile, what will be the second quartile? So second quartile will be always the median. So this is our quartile two. The median is our second quartile, quartile two. Wait a minute, so let me take the pen here. Yeah. So this will be the second quartile. What will be the third quartile? So this part will be our third quartile, Q3. Now, uh, the box plot will be given in this manner. So this is a box, or whisker plot. So this is also called as box plot and whisker plot. I hope I am given directly in this way and uh, the questions will be asked to find out the range. So uh, what are the type of questions they'll be asking on this concept is interquartile range, quartile deviation and coefficient of quartile deviation. If you want to find out the interquartile range here, so we should uh, take uh, go through the uh, formula. So that is Q3 minus Q1. So it is quartile deviation Q3 minus Q1 by 2. If it is coefficient of quartile deviation Q3 minus Q1 by Q3 plus Q1. So these are the things you have to understand. So quartile deviation are the questions which will be asked regarding this box plot or whisker plot. Sometimes figure will be given directly. Sometimes data will be given. So as of now, we should be ready with the both. OK, so whatever the question here, which is on the screen, what will be the interquartile range for this? That's nothing but Q3 minus Q1 will be the interquartile range. So 9 minus 3, it will be 6. 6 by 2, 3 will be the coefficient, uh, I mean, quartile deviation. And the coefficient of quartile deviation is nothing but 3 by, uh, so 9 uh, plus, and so it will be 12. OK? <clears throat> this is how we will find out the quartile uh, deviation values. Now moving to the uh, figure here, which is on the screen. You can see this. Whatever I have explained, everything is there. The center line will be always representing the median. Moving to the next uh, previous slide, I'll show that. So this will be the center line, which is the median. Whatever the figure will be, it may be in the center or it may be anything, any corner, if it is the box we have to consider it as the median and these two ends are the quartiles right first quartile on the left side and third quartile on the right side now moving to the question now you can see the question here so there is a graph given okay and uh, which of the following sets of data applies to this graph 
go through the question uh, once. I'm giving you some time. Once you are done with, put your answer in the chat. Whenever the options are not relevant, we will eliminate the options. So that is the first thing we should know here. So what are the options we can eliminate? What are the options we can eliminate here? See, what is the uh, quartile, quartiles here? What are the quartiles? If I talk about the quartile one, it is quartile two or median, it is minus one. Quartile three, it is zero. Okay, whatever the range of the numbers which are not giving you these values, we can eliminate. Uh, then uh, directly we can say that B, B here. So B value we can eliminate B, uh, sorry, not B, D, D, minus 5. So the minimum value is not minus 5, it's starting from minus 4, so eliminate D. Next, so what, what is the next thing we can eliminate if I go uh, with B here? Uh, C, uh, largest is 5 it's not 4 maximum value is not 4 maximum value is 5 so eliminate this now what are the things we have to consider among the rest of the options so if you see option a um, uh, all the <coughs> all the things whatever the data we have written here is it satisfying or not we will check option c is it satisfying or not and option e is it satisfying or not so median is minus 1 but here in A, median is not minus 1. Uh, wait a minute. So 0 and minus 2. 0 and minus 2. Is 2 so it is minus 1. OK, uh, this concept it is uh, uh, relevant. Now one more thing here. Let us check for C. Why C is not correct? So median is minus 3 here for C. So is it is it correct? So for C, median is minus 3. So it's not correct. Minus 1 is your median. So our answer will be E actually, okay? If you uh, check out with this, so quartile one is minus three, quartile two and Z. And all the values from the above and below, that is maximum and minimum also. Let me check whether you get the answer or not. Uh, no one have replied. Please reply if the concept is clear. Yes, you have to check the range. You see the options. Are the options satisfying the figure? So first, uh, analyze it, analyze the figure first and write down the data. Whatever are they? Three median is minus one and Q three is zero. Eliminate the answers which are not relevant. And check for the uh, relevant one. Even one answer will be correct with in, among the relevant one. And we have to go through that. I hope you understood. If not, just put a message in the chat box. I'll repeat once again. Moving on to the next slide. As we are running out of time, I'm just uh, making it faster. So next slide here. As I told you, the question may be given in the figure or data. So here data is given. Set some set. In whatever the set it may be. What is the average of quartile 1 and quartile 3? Take some time. Give me the correct answer. Average of quartile 1 and quartile 3. What is quartile 1? What is quartile 3? And what is average? This question. Should I explain one more time the box plot or previous question? Which one uh, you want me to explain one more time? Is it the box plot or previous question? Box plot. OK, sure. If you understand the box plot, then you can easily do the previous question. So I'll work out on the concept first.
Instead of uh, doing this stuff, I'll take a new page. Yes. See, I'm just taking some data, some numbers from one, from one to 11, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11 are the numbers I'm taking. So let us consider this is the data actually. So uh, for this data, the middle term is our median. So median in the sense, middle term, middle term in the sense, how much percent? 50%, right? So this will be the 50%, 50% of the data. Now, this concept is not uh, finding out the median. We have to finding out the quartiles. So quartile is nothing but 25% of the data. How many quartiles the data can be divided here? So it will be 25%. So this is the first quartile. In second, uh, third quartile, if I talk about the third quartile, so this will be my third quartile, third quartile, Q3. And this will be my second quartile, Q2 median. So this will be the maximum value and this will be the minimum value. If I talk, if I draw the figure here, the figure will be look like this. The boundaries of the figure represents Q1 and Q3. The center one represents Q2, which is also the median. I hope till here it's clear. Right. Till here, I hope it's clear. This is the box plot actually. Now, if you talk about uh, the questions, previous question, here there is a set of data given in the options. You have to see that what is the range of the box plot. So what is, what is the range of this? What are the values? Uh, not Actually, it's not range. What are the values which lie in this uh, figure? That is a question uh, it's been asked in this figure, the complete enter graph. What are the options? I mean, what, which one is the correct option? We have to choose from this. Okay. So uh, if we see that for the options which are not re relevant to this, so that is option B because the maximum value, you can see this. So if I, uh, okay, I'll just. See, uh, let us talk about option one. So what is this option one? It is minus four, minus four, minus two, zero. Okay. And another one, uh, zero again and zero, uh, five again. So these are the numbers given. What will be the median? Median will be this one. The average of this will be the median. So if I cut out the numbers, the average of minus two uh, plus zero will be the median something minus uh, something uh, in this in between this that will be minus one will be the median okay right uh, if you if you check for the quartiles uh, last quartile quartile two uh, quartile one and quartile three so is it satisfying yeah so what should be the uh, minimum and maximum value minimum value should be minus four minimum and maximum values are also Correct. Minimum and maximum values are also correct. Let us put aside option A for some time. Now move to the option B. What is option B? What is option B here? Option B minimum value is minus 4, but maximum value is 4. If you see in the graph, maximum value is 5. So I have, I have to eliminate option B. If you see option C, option C minimum value is minus 4, maximum value is 5, but the median is minus 3. But here in the figure, the median is minus 1. That's the reason I'm eliminating C also. If you go with the D, value starting from minus 5, but here it's starting from minus 4 in the figure. That's the reason eliminate D also. Now, C for uh, option E, which is the correct one. Let us compare why A is not correct and E is correct. C, uh, for A, what is... Uh, the quartile here, the quartiles, as I told you, this will be the quartile 1, quartile 2, and quartile 3. Minus 3, minus 1, and 0. Right. So minus 3, minus 1, and 0. But here the quartile, uh, quartile 1 value is minus 1. So uh, that, that's not minus 3. That's the reason we have to eliminate this one also. The answer will be option E. I hope it's clear. Good. So still, if it is any doubt, I'm ready to repeat once again. No problem. 
So just move to the next question here. Anyone get the answer for this? You can put it in the chat box. It's very easy. You have to find out the quartiles, first quartile, third quartile, and, uh, and you have to do the average of the both. Cut for you. So instead of doing everything on the graph, whenever the data is given directly, to find out the quartile one value, we will just take n by fourth term. n by fourth term. What is n? n is nothing but number of terms in the series. And to find out quartile three, so we will take it as three of n by fourth term. So this works when the series is given in even. So whenever the series is even series, it will move through this. Whenever the series is odd series, whenever the series is odd, n plus 1 by fourth term and q3 will be 3 of n plus 1 by fourth term right by, by doing this value first count how many uh, values are there what is n so 1 2 3 4 uh, so if you count it our n will be <clears throat> 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 i think it's 12 so it's very easy to move through this concept. Do put your answer in the chat. Last part in previous question. What was the last part? Just give me a clear idea so that I can explain you more clearly. What was that you didn't understand actually? A is not the option. Right. Okay, so why A is not the option and why uh, E is correct? That's your question, I think. Let me clear the screen first. Okay, comparison between A and E. That is the thing we need to do first. See, exactly the figure gives you Q1 as minus 3, Q2 minus 1, and Q3 is 0, something. And maximum and minimum values are minus 4. Maximum value is minus 4, and minimum value is 5. 2, minus 2, 0, 0, 0, and 5. This will be the correct answer I told. Why not 4 you are saying, right? So check for the median. So median, it's correct. Q1, is it correct? What is quartile 1? Quartile 1 according to the data for the first uh, figure, Q1. So it is minus 4 here. What is Q3? It is 0. But quartile 1 is minus 3, not minus 4. That's the reason we are eliminating it. I hope I answered. Clear? Uh, right. Uh, done with this question. Now moving on to the next one. Uh, the answer for this will be 52 plus 101. 52 plus 101. So uh, 52 plus 101 will be the quartile for this one. And uh, in this uh, part, I mean to the right side part, the quartile here, the first quartile. Uh, so I'll just write it directly instead of Thing is, I, I think you have understood how to do that. So it will be 76.5 plus 9. 11 plus uh, 11. So it will be 76.5 plus 9 plus Q1 by 2. Average. So average is nothing but 42.75 will be the answer if you calculate. Okay. Moving to the next slide here. <laughs> Home values among 8,000 homeowners of town X are normally distributed. Again, normal distribution question. Normally distributed with the standard deviation of $11,000 and mean of $90,000. And there, it's a question of quantitative comparison question. So quantity A, the number of home owners in town X whose home value is about $1,12,000 and uh, Quantity B says 300. Try to do this question. 
take some time if you have any queries related to previous question previous uh, questions you can always put a message in the chat box still you didn't understand any concept i am ready to repeat once again yeah this is the question we are uh, going to deal with right now so go with the question try to give me the answer for this this will be the last question of the day today rest of the questions you can do it all the questions related to the concepts whatever we have um, discussed in the class today and the, uh, basically it are from normal distribution and box plot and probability concepts you can easily do that if you have any doubts you can always welcome and so this is the question here so let's do this Any answers for this? You didn't get why E is correct, but you did you understand why A is A is not correct? Uh, what's your name? Let me change your name. Arfia, just uh, reply. Uh, you didn't understand why E is correct, but did you understand why A is not correct? Yes. Then all the options are wrong. Only one option is left, that is E. Obviously, it will be correct logically if you think clear. If you think logically, that is the thing. If you won't think logically and if you want to go through this value, you can see what is the median of this. Uh, complete set median 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 numbers are there, right? The center one will be the median. Just cancel all the values. See for the center one. So 2 and uh, 0, that will be 1 will be the median. Okay. Now what will be Q3 here? Q3, Q1 and median. Q3, Q1 and median. So all the things are matching with this. So that's the reason we are going with E. Okay. Right. Uh, this was the last question of the day. If you get the answer for this, uh, let us discuss the answer for this here. Okay. The number of homeowners in town X whose home value is above uh, the value given here. So first uh, starting data, what is the data given? Is there mean given in the question? We have to check. So it's mean given. So we have to check is the question related to normal distribution? Yes, it is related to normal distribution. Now, what is mean? Mean is 90,000. What will be one standard deviation? One standard deviation is 11,000. Standard deviation is 11,000. One standard deviation. One standard deviation is 11,000. And mean will be 90,000. Okay, so according to quantity A, the number of homeowners in town X whose home, home value is one one two triple zero. Now let us see where we are getting this value. So st one standard deviation above the mean is eleven thousand. If I draw the graph, so it is ninety thousand here. So if I add eleven thousand to this ninety thousand, it will be uh, one zero one zero 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 something. Okay, if I add eleven thousand again, so it will be one one one. Uh, one one two and three zeros okay two standard deviations you can say that so this is the thing now a number of uh, homeowners in town x whose home value is above so we have to see above this so this is the value here if you draw the normal distribution curve so i just take this one so okay uh, so this left right side values only we are dealing with so if you draw the normal distribution curve above this how much percentage is this above so it will be two percent here right so two percent if we if we draw that it will be 34 14 and two percent so two percent what will be the value of homes hometowns in x here it is eight thousand so how much percentage it's 
giving reflecting here it is 2% it's we can write 2% as 0 0.02 by calculating the values here it will be uh, i think it will be 160 so the answer for this quantity a is 160 and quantity b is 300 by comparing obviously quantity b is greater i hope you understood the question Very good that you understood, Atya. I'm happy. Okay. This was the last question of the day today. Rest of the questions, please uh, <clears throat> do as your practice work. I'm just closing the session today. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Also, uh, the uh, handouts will be uploaded by tomorrow for the today's session as well as uh, the geometry. Um, class you may all please leave the class thank you